Yes, guys. Hello and welcome back to the Spurs Related YouTube channel and podcast. I hope everyone's doing very well today. And as you can see by the title of the video, we are talking about the Spurs managerial situation and all the different rumours, all the different sources that are pointing towards a certain couple of favourites. But, you know, this pretty much changes on a weekly basis. Um, so we thought we'd take you through all the stats, all the analysis on who could be a perfect fit for Tottenham, if that's even possible, of course. Um, I'm joined alongside, oh, I've been pulled off because we're the other side today, Andre of Spurs Elated. Um, Andre, how are you doing, mate? Well, I'm doing well. Excited to talk about yet another project, I guess. You know, it seems like every season and a half we're out there talking about a new project, a new manager coming in, and it's the rinse and repeat. Of, oh, back the manager. Oh, we're going to get new players in. There's going to be an overhaul. So, I mean, exciting to talk about because I don't think it's been this open since the last manager. Yeah, 100%. Um, we have today, like I said, um, done some done some stats for you guys, um, some, some research. Um, we're going to be reviewing six managers um in, in a fairly quick fashion but we also want to know what you guys are thinking and who you guys want as the next manager so smash the comments um if you're watching on audio pods make sure you follow the pod on spotify sub to that hit us a five star rating smash the likes on youtube you know all the usual good stuff to support this channel is great guys so thank you for the support recently and Let's get into things, Andre. Like we said, short, snappy content. Hopefully you guys prefer that kind of format. Let us know as well. Um, going into the first man, who seems to be the favourite for the position at the moment, Angie Postecoglou. Now, I nearly got that completely wrong. Andre will correct me if I was wrong. But um, he seems to be the front runner at the moment. There is a lot of um, people underwhelmed on social media. I've been looking at it today and... People are saying, why are we going for a manager that's managed in Australia, Japan, and obviously now he's the manager of Celtic, the Scottish champions. Andre, firstly, before we go through the numbers, what, is, what are your thoughts on this guy? Because for me, very briefly, I can't say I'm completely convinced with him making that jump from Scotland to the Premier League. Of course, we saw it with Steven Gerrard is the easiest comparison, and that went completely horribly wrong. You know, he did not do well at Aston Villa, but he did take Rangers to their first title for 10 years. So it's a difficult one. He's experienced. He's an older manager. What are your thoughts, first of all? Well, the thing is, I mean, are we really going to be linked with that many high caliber managers after the sort of recent history we have where we've brought in Mourinho, we've brought in Conte and they've left with no trophies? Um you could say to an extent, if I was in if I was in their position, I'd be a little nervous to go over there. If I was high caliber, I'd wait for another club who's going to back me, who's going to sort of uh, give me the tools I need to be successful. But you know, I think in a way, this is a stepping stone for Postacoglu to go in there and prove something in the Premier League. If that's what he'd like to do, um, he's done very well at Celtic. Uh, numbers wise, let's get into that, right? We have a 76 per win percentage this season with Celtic. Uh, after 52 matches, he's got 40 wins. Points per match, about 2.4, because he's also got uh, five draws in there. 40 wins, though, and only seven losses. That's uh, that's pretty good. Honestly, I, I got to say, if we manage those kind of stats over here, that'd be crazy. But, you know, the league he's in versus the one in the Premier League are two completely different beasts. I was about to say the exact same thing um you're spot on i mean it's obviously impressive only seven losses but i mean who are those seven losses to probably half of them are rangers and the other half are hearts or aberdeen you know it's not really going to be a ross county that's beating him it's not really going to be a dundee united beating him um with all due respect the scottish premier league is not the best standard of football i do believe scott um celtic do play some nice football because obviously they've held their own in the champions league i was reading a few uh, articles earlier about um, Celtic holding their own in some of the Champions League games against Real Madrid, against Shakhtar Donetsk. I think they ended up losing them, but they held their own for 60, 70 minutes. You could argue that the calibre of players they have are completely different to the likes of Vinicius, Benzema, and, you know, the decent players from Shakhtar. But at the same time, you know, 
it's, it's, it's probably the hardest manager to judge in this whole video. And I think, for me, I'm a bit underwhelmed if we were to get him. And he seems to be the front runner, like I mentioned earlier. But, and all these new, you know, all these tier one sources are coming out and saying that he'd be open to a move and we're potentially making moves for him. But for me, there is better options out there. And we're going to come to that, aren't we, Andre? Maybe you want to just briefly, um, obviously you've mentioned his win ratio and his um, points per match. But this season is is pretty much the same um, throughout his Celtic career, right? You know, you read out his 2022-23 stats, but his Celtic overall stats are very similar as well, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, you, you double the amount of matches and he's got, you know, 82 wins, 12 draws, 18 losses in total. That's about a 73% win ratio. So, you know, it's about the same, honestly. Consistent, it seems like he's been, yeah. he's been consistent, which is good. It's something we need, but... Can he do it in the Premier League? That's that's the biggest uh, sort of question here. Um, we were underwhelmed when we brought in Nuno from Wolves, and he had done some sort of stuff with Wolves, and mm. we got rid of him real quick. So it's, we're gonna it's, make it's, him proud. It, it's kind of a, a thing where whoever you pick, you you gotta back them. You know, don't don't bring yeah. someone in when you know that there's an elephant in the room and that there's someone else you want. So if we do go for Postacoglu, I will back him, but they be, like the board better back him as well. Don't don't bring him in. Put all this pressure on the specific way you want him to play. Bring him in. Let him play his yeah. style. Get him the player he needs. Um, other than that, honestly, to me, he just it's just a, someone who seems. I don't want to say unproven because again, I don't want to disrespect the league that he's been play- that he sort of managed, but he is unproven in the top six of the league. Correct. So, Andre, without let's... there's not much we can say from there. One hundred percent, mate. And I think that pretty much covers that. Um, we could do his tactical t- tactical analysis if it does look like he's really gonna, you know, sign the dotted line and the contract comes out. But potentially, let's um, focus that on another video. This is kind of a top line stat. Top line opinion. Um, we also want your yours your opinion in the comments. You guys have been really good at commenting recently on your thoughts on what's going on at Tottenham and all the transfer rumors and the managerial rumors. So do let us know in the comments uh, or if you're on Spotify, maybe ping on over to YouTube and 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 drop your comment down on there. Um, let's move on to the next manager. Like I said, we've got six managers to get through in the next 15 minutes. It's a pretty uh, tough task, but we're going to do it. Um, so the next one, a very familiar yep. face. Again, an ex-Celtic manager, um, an ex-Liverpool manager, Leicester manager, obviously, most recently, who have gone down. Could argue that Brendan Rodgers essentially sent Leicester down. I mean, I think Dean Smith had the chance to keep them up, but that's completely another discussion. Um, just to take the stats you've you've, you've conjured up here, uh, Andre, uh, 1.599 points uh, per match for Leicester. Across four seasons, 47% win ratio. And that doesn't sound too bad. But then when you go to the 2020-22-23 stats, it's a completely different story, isn't it, Andre? Yeah, I mean, he's got a 34% uh, win ratio in that last season before he got sacked. Um, it's it's not a good one. And we were talking about managers who come in from, actually, that specific league, the Scottish League, right? He was at Celtic before. Um, exactly. He had a 70% win ratio. That is almost almost the same as Pasta Koglu. Which is why I'm glad you did it in this order, actually, Andre. I mean, unintentionally or intentionally, but it makes complete sense because, like you said, Pasta Koglu, 63% win ratio at Celtic. Brendan Rodgers, 70% in almost the same amount of matches. It's almost a like-for-like like comparison. Brendan Rodgers coming over to the Premier League after Celtic, and it went. It's, 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 I think it's unfair to say it went badly overall at Leicester for Brendan Rodgers because he did win an FA Cup. He did win the Community Shield with them. He did fantastically well, especially in the first two seasons. But the last season, obviously, he's completely, you know, the rails have come off. It's completely derailed on form. And, and at Liverpool, obviously, 166 matches, 85 wins, 51% win ratio over three seasons. He doesn't really last more than three seasons at a club, which is interesting. It's a bit like an Antonio Conte situation. Um, but then again, that's just the nature of managerial, you know, 10 years in, in general, isn't it, really? Um, what's your thoughts on this then? Brendan Rodgers, yes or no for me? Just quickly, 
I would say Brendan Rodgers over Postacoglu, but I'm still not. My heart is not set on this option either. I personally, I would say no. I, I think that um, you know it's a bitter taste for me that uh, what what's gone on with Leicester and sort of how it derailed. And that's not not to say that that would happen to Tottenham. I feel like seeing Daniel Levy's trend, he would jump ship with us. Like he would he would get him out of there before we got to the position that Leicester got. But I don't want us to even be talking about that. You know. Um, it, it really, you know, and you could say that to an extent, it depends on what Leicester did with their players as well, right? They, um, who they invested in, and then what he did with them. So, would that happen to Tottenham? Would we start investing in young players that didn't work out, and then, and then we end up being in a position where we're fighting relegation? I'm really scared that that could happen. So, I'd rather, I'd rather not, not have him come. To be honest, no, I get what you're saying. I've just realised I was on mute when I was agreeing with you. But yeah, 100% um, agree with you. Uh, for me, I think Brendan Rodgers, at times, played nice football. Especially under Liverpool, I remember. 20, 2013, he had Sturridge, Suarez and Sterling up top. And it was one of the most exciting attacking football um, methods I've seen in the Premier League, to be honest with you. Now, obviously, that speaks for itself. Luis Suarez, probably the Premier League's, one of the Premier League's best ever strikers, without a doubt. Sturridge was on fire at that point. Sterling was young exciting, pacey, full of skill, full of, you know, ambition. I just think he, Brendan Rodgers has started to tail off in terms of he hasn't really kept up with the managerial sort of ways and the modern techniques and the modern style of football. I'm not saying that, you know, football's completely modernised in the last 10 years, but it's certainly changed. It's certainly the formation, the new formations coming in with sort of inverted wing backs and other sort of formations. I just feel like Brendan Rodgers has sort of got found out a little bit. Now, you, I think it's almost inexcusable to send that Leicester team down. You compare it to the likes of Bournemouth. Leicester's team and squad over Bournemouth is ridiculous. They have Tillemans, they had Madison, Barnes, Pereira, Drewsbury Hall, Vardy. Ian Acho, just to name a few, Pats and Dakar, some fantastic, fantastic players, and I probably missed a few. And then you go to Bournemouth, and I'd say their top player is probably Dominic Solanke, and I'm thinking, how have Bournemouth survived unless they haven't? It is incredible to think that. So he obviously lost the dressing room, but also you have to say his tactics clearly weren't being adapted to the position, the opposition he was facing which I think was a big problem. And that would be my main concern with Brendan Rodgers. We know that Tottenham's dressing room can get toxic at times. And we know that the players can um, turn on the manager. Does Brendan Rodgers still have that character, ironically, he loves that word, to manage a Tottenham team, which is in absolute dire circumstances, if you pardon the pun right now. It really is. So for me, it's a no for Brendan Rodgers, but I would take him over Postacoglu. But that was if, you know, there was only two managers on the planet and there's not. So, Brandon Rogers, completely agree with you. No. No, totally agree. Um, Want to look up to the next one here? We got yep. uh, uh, we got Luis Enrique, the next one that we're going to look at. Uh, not much that he's really done other than be, like, he was there for Spain, World Cup finished, out he went. And then from there, he had Barcelona. Um, he got a 76% win ratio at Barcelona, about 181 matches, 138 wins. Would you say that this would be someone to bring in? I'm not. I'm not as uh, vetted on what he has really done. If he's worth bringing in, exactly. I'm in for Luis Enrique. It's not my top choice, but I would be happy with him. I think he's a very, very. He, he's a very attacking style of manager. I mean, you look at Barcelona. He had an incredible lineup there. Um, his 76 percent win ratio. Obviously, not too good at Spain. Spain's form recently has been very, very poor um, since sort of they won the last um, major trophy. But for me, I, I just think he's 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 much more of a a spicier manager than the other ones. You know, he he, he would play nice football. He would get them playing sort of a tick attack style for um, play. But then you question, do we have the resources for that? You know, you could bring in Pep and he wouldn't be able to play his sort of nice football um if he doesn't have the correct players right but 
I think I would be more positive about Luis Enrique than the other two managers we just discussed. And I know he didn't do well at Spain, really, but Barcelona, 76% win ratio. And he's just a good, he's just a good all-round manager, really. I would agree, but do you think other clubs would probably want him over us, to be honest? I think I think that's kind of out of the question of the video. I'm kind of saying out of these six options who I would want. Um, sure. But there is someone else I would rather want out of the next three. Oh, yeah? And which would that be? And that would be exactly the one coming on next. Julian Nagelsmann. This, for oh, me, man. is the one we need to get. Without a doubt, I'm going to try and keep it short and sweet. Andre, I'll let you read out the stats in a minute. But Julian Nagelsmann is a manager that was absolutely treated completely wrong by Bayern Munich in um, at the end of his tenure in March. He got sacked. He had a 71% win ratio. I think he'd only lost two Bundesliga games up to that point. Bayern were flying. Bayern were top. They just got knocked out of the Champions League by PSG. However, I know they beat they beat PSG. Sorry, but he got sacked before that, just before he got the chance to then play his next match, which was very, very strange. It was a strange decision. And I mean, uh, Tuchel nearly absolutely messed up their league. If it wasn't for Dortmund bottling on the last day of the league, they would have lost that league. And it would have been entirely down to the Bayern Munich owner's fault for sacking a manager that is young. He gets the players going. He's an incredible man in management. He's got great man management skills. For me, Julian Nagelsmann is the best version, and I compare it to Poch as much as it hurts me. Young manager, ambitious, looking to win trophies. You can laugh at me in the comments if you think, you know, he's not going to win a trophy at Spurs, whatever. That's a completely different discussion. But he's just a fantastic manager. And he he was even great at Leipzig as well. Leipzig were just coming through, getting very good players, obviously very well backed. And he was well-respected at Leipzig for playing a nice style of football as well. I think it makes sense. I think it's like almost the potch when he came in from the Southampton move, although Nagelsmann has obviously managed two very big clubs, one huge club, and potch hadn't really managed a, a big club. But I'm talking about age. I'm talking about attacking football, nice football, great to watch. Nagelsmann would completely excite me um, if we got him. Oh, I totally agree. I think it's 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 very strange for a, for a club that's been so successful. The amount of managers they've gone through is crazy. Yeah. It's like they they want to keep it fresh. I don't know if it's if, if that's their philosophy or if they're just they have a short fuse and the minute they see one tiny little slip up, they're like, "See you later." But yeah, I mean, you 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 guys have all been hearing what we've been saying, right? The numbers for the for the last season before they got sacked have been in the fifties and the forties. This. Uh, what is it? Uh, Nagelsmann had a 72% win ratio the season mm. he got sacked. 71% uh, win percentage overall uh, at yeah. Bayern. And uh, it, it surprised me when I saw that number. There's there's no way you have something like that and then you still sack them. Oliver but Kahn I, I, and Oliver Kahn in the hierarchy, they, they completely turned on him for no reason. Um, I think there was a falling out personally, but... <laughs> It's an absolutely ridiculous decision. The guy is genuinely one of the top, top managers in the world for me. He's a very, very good manager. I would be so excited to get him. I, I think I think the Bayern Munich fans were also very gutted to see him go. And Bayern Munich are one of the biggest clubs in the world. They're top five, without a doubt. If they're sad to see him go, Tottenham would be absolutely honoured to have his services. Oh, and, uh, and totally. And I mean, we've had, what, Klopp, we've had Pep. Uh, managers who are very successful in the Premier League, one of the top man top managers in the world, and they they were first at uh, in the Bundesliga, right? So, yeah. I mean, this could be another one. Now it would all depend on the board to back Nagelsmann and what the style he plays and the players he needs. But yeah, I would agree. This is one that I'm I would be very excited uh, to hear about if he came for sure, for sure. I don't get it because I'm pretty I'm almost certain he was through to the next round of the Champions League. Um. Yeah, and I just don't get it. And then Tuchel came in like almost instantly. That was a weird one. But um, let's quickly move on. We've got like a couple more minutes. Two more managers. Um, Thomas Tuchel is the next one. Now, oh, yeah. the current Bayern Munich manager, apparently there's talks that he may not even be staying. I'm not sure how true that is. 50% win ratio 
for Bayern Munich. 12 matches, six wins. Like I said, he's nearly absolutely messed the league up for them. I know um, when Nagelsmann got sacked, Bayern Munich was second um, in the league uh, behind Dortmund, but only just. And like I said, he was through to the next round of the Champions League. I'm always certain of it. Um, 63% win ratio for Chelsea. Obviously, the Chelsea fans absolutely loved him. They loved his style of football. They loved how he was with the players. 76% win ratio for PSG. Okay, you could say that PSG are in a league where they very much dominate, but, you know, pretty good re- records. For me, I don't want Thomas Tuchel, and there's one reason for it. You can you can analyse the stats all you want. We can talk about the points per game. I'm not going to do it, Andre. The, re- the main reason I don't want Thomas Tuchel, and people can call me mad, we've had Mourinho, we've had Conte, we've had Andre Villas-Poes. There's three managers there where it hasn't worked out really at Tottenham, especially the latter two in Conte and Mourinho. Why hasn't it worked out? There's various reasons. One is that they weren't back properly, but two, I don't think it's excusable because also Conte was backed in that last window and it didn't work out. So I just don't want another ex-Chelsea manager. They've just got our ex-Tottenham manager in Mauricio Pochettino. I don't want to go Thomas Tuchel. I don't think these Chelsea managers work and I don't know why. Like I said, it, there's there's various reasons, but for me, Thomas Tuchel, no thank you. And he's nearly messed up the league for Bayern Munich, like I said earlier. Like, I don't think he's that, that good, to be honest with you. Um, and I don't think it would work at Tottenham. Call me mad, but that's my opinion. Oh, well, I mean, you know, I also think that to, to an extent, every club he's come into, they've been like right on the cusp of greatness. And he's had really, really good players at these clubs that he's been to. Um, Tottenham. That's not the case. I think we have a few world class players, and that's it. And then a bunch of players who, yeah. give or take, uh, you know, we all have some varying opinions on them. Some of them do need to go. Uh, so, Correct. would Tuchel be the guy to come in and have a long term project over a bunch of players who need to head out, making the best out of a few of them while we continue to build? That's a whole other story. And I do agree with you that Conte was backed. And I've always said the backing just came a little bit late because you de- they decided to do it with a manager who doesn't have that much patience. It's a manager who wants to get it all done with in over two, three windows, not four years, right? So, Correct. you know, I think Daniel Levy really shot himself in the foot there, bringing in a manager who is like, all right, we're almost there. Let's get a few more things in and let's go. But no, we were not there. And we're not yeah. there at all now. So would Tuchel be the guy to do a long-term project? That is, that's the real question, I think. So I'm, I'm very unsure about this one. Yeah, I'm unsure. Guys, let us know if you feel differently about Tuchel, because I think that's probably the most controversial one. I could be wrong. I think a lot of people will probably say Tuchel is a world-class manager and, you know, we should give him a chance. But let's see what you guys think. Last one of the video. It is Graham Potter, who, of course, had an absolute mare at Chelsea. Absolute nightmare. Um... We'll go for it quickly through his win percentages um, before we quickly give an opinion. Andre, do you want to go through that? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, they're not good. I'll say that. 39% mm-hmm. win ratio in at Chelsea, a 32% win ratio at Brighton, and before that, the Swansea, 41% win ratio. So, I mean, yeah. even at Brighton, it wasn't very good. It was a long-term project, and he decided to jump to another ship in the season where you could say that his project was finally, you know, building I- fruition. You know, just to just to kind of put my say on that, I I agree with that. I think he did jump ship at the wrong time, but I would disagree with what you said at the start. I think Graham Potter completely revolutionised Brighton. The style of football they played, fantastic wing backs with Lamperty one side, Cucurella the other side. He really got them going. Basuma in the middle, obviously. Later on, um, you know the players like Casado were coming through. Deserby's taken, you know, when his project was coming to fruition and just taking it with both hands and accelerated it even further. It almost made Potter's tenure look pretty average. So kind of agreeing with what you're saying there. But I would say overall, don't be fooled by that 40, what was it? 32% win ratio at Brighton because also a lot of his um, games were draws. If you look, 43 draws out of 134 matches. So actually, he's probably got a similar draw ratio and a similar loss ratio. It's pretty much 33% throughout the board. So for a club like Brighton, who were just avoiding relegation in the first two years of Premier League and sort of taking them to a mid-table team was very impressive. 
if you go to Chelsea, it's a completely different story. He was well out of his depth. He was playing with a, a team with a, you know, a multi, multi million pound budget. He just didn't work. He didn't get on with the owner. The owner gave him a little bit of time and he just completely crumbled, really. He couldn't, you know, get the dressing room going. I think a lot of the players didn't really respect him and he wasn't the most experienced manager. I think all these different points led to a complete capitulation in form on the pitch. But would he work at Tottenham? I think it would be a very, very toxic job for him to take on after his very, very toxic tenure at Chelsea. I don't think it makes sense now. Potentially in the future, I do like Graham Potter. But at the moment, you know, mentally for him, it's not a good move for him. It really isn't. Well, see, I kind of agree with you. The, the thing I'm saying, though, is that we don't know what his project would have led to because he jumped ship, right? Yeah. So as far as I'm concerned, the minute he left, that's all we have to look at. Right. Doesn't matter how well they did now because he went to Chelsea. And unfortunately, I think there was more to it than just his managerial um, tactics over at Chelsea, because that is a club that has, I think, what I think I heard somewhere that they could take three different starting 11s and they would all be good enough to play in the Premier League based on that sort of the, uh, the, the squad they have. So they have a bunch of first team players sitting on the bench that's basically what's happening so it is it is toxic city over there and they need to stop loaning players and actually sell them and make something smaller um and imagine so. someone like Graham potter coming in who it's his first time going to a big big club and he has to deal with that so yeah, yeah. i personally think it'd be a little too risky to bring him to tottenham uh, a club that right now is in need of leadership and a vision um and i'm not just talking some you know, ambitious vision. We're talking a vision where it's long term, it's realistic, and we work through it every window because we need time. That yeah. I've already put that in my heart that I won't be seeing Tottenham, you know, win a trophy for maybe a few more seasons. We'll be trying for it again. Um, yeah. And don't get me wrong, if they prove me wrong, cool. But as far as I'm concerned, we need someone who has a vision and can take every player that he feels belongs in this style of play in this project and take them with them and go through it and bring in the players they need. And that's going to take a few seasons. And I don't know no, if Potter, right. it would be very risky to bring Potter in to do that. Yeah, no, I think you're spot on. I think that is honestly a nail on the head stuff there from you. Um, that is all we have time for, guys. 28 minutes of complete analysis of six different managers. Let us know in the comments who your favorite is. Let us know in the comments maybe someone else that we haven't covered off that you hope comes to the forefront in this managerial you know, mess, if you like. You know, we haven't had a manager for about 70, 80 days. It's crazy. It's nearly been a third of the year. But as I said at the start of the video, smash the thumbs up, subscribe and follow the podcast on Spotify and on YouTube. Smash a comment who you want. And guys, as always, you know the score. Thanks for watching and we'll see you later. As always, come on you Spurs.